Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Harvest Church. Let's stand and get ready to worship tonight. I have so much anticipation for what's going to take place. And, you know, if you have not uh, uh, thought about that yet, just right now, before we enter into worship, as we enter into worship, uh, you know, just begin to, uh, to posture yourself just to receive something great from God. You know, don't leave this place um, having not experienced the glory. Let's pray. Father God, we lift you up. Right now, we just create a place for you, for your glory to dwell. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would show up in this place and that every single person here will encounter you in such a meaningful and powerful way. We lift you up in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's worship.
service today. I just saw this picture of God walking through the room and going up and down every aisle and just touching each person and just meeting them exactly where they're at with whatever they're needing. God knows, you know, he knows where you're at. And so we're going to sing this song, Raise a Hallelujah, and I know you guys know it. Um, and I just want you to sing that. I'm going to raise a hallelujah. Whatever you're facing, whatever that situation is, like he's here in the room right now. He's walking up and down these aisles and wants to meet you in that place. So have that picture in your mind of he is ready and waiting as you sing this out with us tonight. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me.
situation in the kingdom. There is no hopeless situation in the kingdom.
it's right out of those scriptures. It's one of my favorites, actually, but it's, um, he says, you've loved righteousness, you've hated wickedness. Therefore, God, our God, has anointed you with the oil of joy above your companions. Basically, what he's saying, he's anointing you for promotion. Receive it. There it is, right there, right there, right there, right there. That's it. There it is. There's just a spiritual elevation coming to your life. That's it. That's it. More, 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 more. Ha. Thank you. That's it. Don't rush. Praise God. <laughs> you know, my husband was talking about not giving any into diminishing. Uh, thank you. I can feel that joy. Not giving into diminishing thinking as a lie of the devil where he diminishes you. And I was, I was, you know, I have this statement that I make. It's very similar, but it comes out of the, the life of Hannah, the prayer of Hannah, where she had everything, every excuse in the world to give her prayer away. And she never gave her prayer away. And that's because she refused to be re reduced. She chose to increase, right? Right. So I want you to say this after me. I refuse to be reduced. I will only increase. I want you to say it again. I refuse to be reduced. I will only increase. And we're not gonna give a prayer away, amen? We're not going to give our prayers away. You know, what's fascinating is we don't always realize what we can have in God. We had testimonies come out of this institute that were crazy. I mean, we had people like losing weight supernaturally. We had tons of testimonies like that. I'm still getting them. Uh, we, had, uh, we had a prayer that went out because the Holy Spirit spoke to me. We had a prayer that went out for those who were losing their hair. Now, I know for guys, like that's distinguished, but for girls, that's not cool. Okay, and so so anyway, and I this girl came up to me at the end of uh, the institute, and she's and her pants are all baggy, and they're like practically falling off her because she had the supernatural weight loss miracle, but then her hair grew an inch overnight. We're, we always think God won't do that, but He will, and then I'm still getting in financial testimonies. What do you mean by that? Well, the Lord spoke to me again. He said, I'm going to put money in people's bank accounts. You know, and I said, I didn't know what to do. I said, uh, everybody shake their phone. I don't know what else to do. Check your account. Check your account. Shake your phone. And we had um, uh, probably about half a dozen testimonies during the Institute. Two widows, that, that's what touched me more than anything else, is two widows came up, and one of them got $900 in her account. And then the other got $2,000 dropped into our account, like, like, like that. And then the guy up top, Ted was up top, and he was just like, you know, he was shaking his phone, but he's doing his job. And he's like, I've been trying to sell this thing on Craigslist for four months while we're shaking my phone. It sold. I got $2,900. And the reason I'm telling some of you are like, you know, like, I think you need to shake your phone, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, just receive. But the thing is, what I'm, what I'm saying is don't, don't diminish yourself. Don't have diminished thinking. Don't reduce yourself. But don't diminish God. Don't diminish God. Okay? Because we're, 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 we're stepping into miracles. Okay? And all of a sudden, like, all this awareness is coming to me. Like, we can have so much in God, and it's not selfish, it's not vain, it's not greed, it's none of that. It's because He's a good God, and we are King's kids. Amen, amen. Can we just give Him a shout? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You can go ahead and, and give your neighbor a hug, a high five, fist bump. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you can be seated. Now, I just want to welcome those of you who are guests with us here today. I'm going to point you to the screen. If you'll please text the word welcome to a number that's going to flash up there in just a moment. Like, like super, there it is. Okay. Is that, text that word welcome to that number. Um, also, if you're online, there is a tab that you can fill out as well. 
and text that word on campus, text the word welcome. And, and when you do that, there's going to be a gift for you with your name on it at the end of service at the Information Center. Uh, if you don't like to use the text feature, there is a card in your bat seat pocket that looks like this. Fill it out. Take it to the Info, info Center at the end of service, and they will have something for you. And now I'm going to point you to the screen. We have some video announcements. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Check out the arrow found in your bulletin for places and ways to connect at Harvest. Visit our website at harvestonline.church. Hey there and welcome to Harvest. My name is Austin and these are your video announcements. Before we continue in worship this morning, let's take a look at some of the exciting things happening right here at Harvest. This Wednesday night, we have Equip Night downtown at 7 p.m. Marriage on the Rock with Tony and Ana Alvarez will continue throughout the month of March. And Kingdom Life, the truth concerning community. We have Harvest Kids for babies through kinder and first through sixth grade on Wednesday and Sunday services. And for our youth, Revolution Student Culture meets every Wednesday at our North Campus. If you live in the Merced or Ripon area, we invite you to come on out to the gathering every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Visit our website for details. Harvest Men will be having a men's breakfast on April 13th, Saturday at 8 a.m. You can RSVP by signing up at the Info Center after service. Harvest Kids for first through sixth grade will have their annual Easter Palooza. It will be on Saturday, April 20th. There will be games, food, and our biggest egg hunt yet. Tickets are required for this event, and you can grab your tickets today inside of Revive Bookstore downtown or at the Info Center at the North Campus. Visit our website for details. Those were your weekly announcements. Join us next week as we begin our new series, Unbroken, Ancient Promises, Present Hope. How many are ready to get rocked even more, right? Man, the presence of God is so thick in here already tonight, isn't it? Hey, just something really quick on that Easter Palooza thing, that kids event. Uh, it says you need a ticket. The ticket's only a dollar if you buy them ahead of time. And the only, yeah. pre -sale. And the only reason we do that is so that way we could have some kind of an idea how many people are going to show up. So we figure what's the cheapest we could make it. And uh, so it's a dollar. So, and you know, you know, we've done this before. We don't make it a dollar so to give you a discount. We don't believe in discounts. We make it a dollar so you could buy a whole bunch and invite friends and neighbors and reach out to a whole bunch of people, right? Because we learned that this morning. We don't think lack, we think overflow, right? So we're gonna uh, overflow in just reaching people. So make sure you go up to the bookstore and get your tickets for that. Uh, man, it's such an honor to have Apostle John Eckhart with us tonight. And uh, if you were at the Institute this weekend, man, if you were in those sessions that he spoke, he just, you got rocked. And uh, I know I did. And uh, so tonight we're gonna take a moment right now because we don't wanna stop later in the service and disturb any flow and just, we're going to just let him loose here in a few minutes. And, uh, but we want to take a moment uh, tonight and honor him. And one of the uh, best ways I know to honor uh, the man of God is to sow a generous seed into their life and ministry. You know, I was thinking, you know, uh, Matthew 10, 41, Jesus said this. Uh, he says, he who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet receives what? A prophet's reward. He who receives a righteous man in a uh, as a righteous man receives a righteous man's reward. In other words, what we honor through recognize, what we recognize through honor, that's the reward we receive from. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And when there's a gift in the house, we got to recognize the gift if we want to receive of the anointing that's in the, on the gift. So tonight we're going to receive, we're just receiving one offering tonight, and all of this is going to go to Apostle Eckhart. And we want to bless him uh, immensely because he's already been such a blessing to us. And, and uh, he's been a blessing to uh, How many of you have just been blessed over the years by his teaching? I've been following his teaching for uh, many years. I think it was last year, maybe the year before, Apostle. I you did that 30 days of favor on Facebook. I was getting rocked. I was just looking on Facebook every day just so I could follow that. Then I'd go on his website and order every book and audio I could find on favor. And just really did something in my life, and I believe really the life of our church. We started praying different on Sundays about, you know, having favor so people come to the Lord. I didn't tell you, I should have probably told you in the back. We've, we saw a dramatic, and my intercessors will tell you, we saw a dramatic increase of people getting saved in the services yeah. since we started praying the favor prayer yeah. on Sundays. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. So 
We want to generously, generously sow tonight into the anointing and in the gift that's in the house. So I'm going to ask the ushers to come, and uh, you can write out a check. You can use an envelope. Uh, there's different ways you could, you could give. You could text to give, uh, give online, use the app, uh, all sorts of different ways. But he here's what I'm saying is you always put a seed into the ground if you want to harvest. You always put something into the ground. Always, you say, well, I, I just got one seed left. Well, don't eat your seed then. Right, sow your seed and watch what God is going to do. Put a demand on the gift and the anointing through your honor and through your seed tonight. Are you ready? Yes. So come on, hold it up to the Lord. And I know the Lord's already speaking to you about what you should do. And uh, I said, I'm getting two numbers. Well, it's the bigger one, that's the Lord. <laughs> Listen, the devil never tells you to give a higher offering. Right? It's always the Lord. And uh, you say, well, I'm not feeling led. You don't have to feel led to sow. Right? You sow because it's a spiritual principle of, of, of harvest, seed time and harvest. So uh, I'm just stalling for a moment because I know the Lord is talking to you, and then you're also getting uh, the seed ready. Okay. Are we ready? All right. Why don't you stand up, and we're going to pray together. And then I'll have you sit down again. <laughs> then I'll have you stand up again in a minute. Just warning you ahead of time. Come on, hold it to the Lord. If you're giving electronically, you could hold your phone. Father, we just thank you that tonight we have the privilege and we have the honor to sow into the gift, into the anointing, into the man of God. So Lord, as we hold this seed, we come into agreement together. Father, that this is a seed of honor. We honor the gift that's in the house, but also pray for your people, Lord, that as they sow tonight, Lord, you give them a harvest, a hundredfold back into their life, not only with money, but with what money cannot buy. And Lord, we thank you for what you have already done this weekend, but what you're doing tonight in the life of this church and in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen, amen. amen. You may be seated as they receive the offering tonight. Jen, you want to do a recap? Well, you know what, uh, we had somebody create a, create a recap reel, so it's about a minute long, so I want you to take a look at that, and you'll see what happened this weekend. Isn't that powerful? I love it. I love watching it because I, I try to see everybody who's in there. And so uh, we just had a really powerful weekend. Um, and I'm going to invite Apostle Eckhart to come forward and then um, to come up here. And then I'm going to just share a little bit. The way, the way that we connected is was actually what happened was at an institute, a Sears and Prophets Institute. I had his book. I'd never met him before. I had his book, Prophet Arise. And, and so I was, just thought it was the best book ever. And so I actually got a copy of your book, and I gave it to everybody at the Institute. <laughs> and so I gave it to everybody. It just so happened that very same weekend, he was doing a Facebook Live. He's never met me. I think he read something that I wrote. And he's telling his Facebook Live people, Jennifer Evaz, blah, 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 you know, whatever he said. And I started getting all this influx of, of Eckhart followers liking my page. I mean, like up to 1,000. I think we started counting. It just got ridiculous. And so anyway, I just thought it was so powerful that it started at an institute and you came to an institute. Amen. And so I just want to give us a, a warm Why don't you stand? HCC. Let's welcome. Welcome to them. And I just say thank you so much. Amen. Thank you so much. You can be seated. Um, you all, are, you all are, are great, great people. 
Either you're fooling me or this is really the way you are. Great, great church. I've enjoyed myself uh, so much this week. Um, I did share the video on Facebook. So I want all of my followers, those who are watching now on Facebook, to please share a harvest with the world uh, so that the world can know if you're anywhere near uh, Turlock, California, my first time here, um, you have a great place you can come to that believes in the glory of God, the power of God, the anointing of God, the miracles. I, I, had, I have heard uh, uh, Jennifer minister one time. We were ministering together uh, in a conference in the Los Angeles area with Sarah Morgan. And uh, she ministered and I ministered. It was in the Shrine Auditorium, I believe, and had a chance to sit uh, next to her. And then I did a, um, a discerning of spirits challenge. I invited her to come on. Very, very well received. But I, I, this is the first time I really saw her um, minister in miracles. And it really, really stirred me up uh, in the area of miracles. I may have to have you come to Chicago and um, flow in some miracles because we need them in Chicago. We need miracles. And um, she, was, she did the, the weight loss which I believe God for. Now, the hair growing back, I didn't really want it because, you know, I can get up in the morning and just rub my head. I don't have to worry about combing. So the, I, I, didn't, I didn't want another full head of hair. Uh, when I was young, I struggled with it. But after a while, I just, I'm so used to getting up, just, you know, shining my head and, and um, free from anything, worried about combing it or anything. But um, the weight loss, I believe God for, and I'm still believing God that um, I was hoping that my pants would just drop right in the service. <laughs> I, would, I would not have been ashamed. I would have pulled them right up and came up and testified. Um, one of the things that really, really, um, uh, I never heard this shared before when she said how that people get offended by miracles. That, you know, they say, well, you know, for instance, the, the money uh, coming into an account. People say, well, you know, if you want money, earn it, work for it. God doesn't put money into accounts. Well, Jesus turned water into wine. So I guess the same skeptics would have said you should have brought enough wine in the first place. You ran out of wine. It's too bad. Wine comes from grapes. So you have no right to turn water into wine. And uh, people really do get offended uh, because they always want to explain away the miraculous. But um, God is a miracle working God. And I believe for more and more miracles. And, and so I really have enjoyed myself um, uh, this, uh, this week with you here in California. And um, being such great hosts, uh, I enjoy just being in the praise and worship. And just being uh, in the atmosphere is a blessing to me, uh, my receiving. And so I thank you so much for your, your, your hospitality and your, your warm welcome. I really, really do appreciate it. Um, I've been preaching for 40 years. And I never, ever under... Somebody say, wow. I say, oh, my God. Okay. Yeah, I started when I was two. Now I was a little older. But um, uh, I never, ever take for granted uh, the call that God has placed on my life and uh, the people of God that are all around the world that you meet. I, I really, really appreciate and thankful, thankful to God for God's people and um, such great, great leaders um, and your vision here for church uh, planting and what you're doing here in this region. I really, really mean that uh, from my heart. I'm going to share something tonight that I believe is going to really, really release overflow in your life. How many want overflow? <laughs> and this is a word that the Lord gave me that is uh, somewhat different from uh, what I have um, been ministering on the subject of favor. I'm going to talk about overflowing with favor. And I'm going to uh, lay a foundation to share some things apostolically of how this applies to apostolic people and um, how you can move more into overflow. And then I, I really felt 
uh, tonight that God was going to impart uh, a strong apostolic spirit into your life. Um, I've been moving in the apostolic now for about 30 years. I got involved in the apostolic around 1988, um, 88, 89. So really 30 years. I was in Nigeria ministering in 1989. I went there to do a deliverance conference, and I was preaching in Benin uh, City, and I went north to a, a Muslim area uh, called Kaduna, and I was conducting a deliverance uh, conference there. Um, I had no understanding of the apostolic. I was primarily moving in deliverance. Uh, and then when I was there, a, a man of God that I only met one time gave me a prophetic word about an apostolic ministry. I didn't know anything about apostles. I didn't know whether there were any living. I thought they were all dead. Um, I was a pastor. Um, and I was at that time, I was pastoring two churches. So I had already done church planting. So I had done some apostolic work and he prophesied over me about an apostolic ministry and I took that prophecy and I came home with it and I shared it with my congregation I didn't just go out and get cards made up you know some people get one word and they launch their worldwide ministry I submitted it to the church I said I don't understand this uh, pray for me and uh, my church began to pray for me and I began to study the subject and in 1990, I wrote a book called uh, The Ministry Anointing of the Apostle. It was a very, very small book because I really did not have very much revelation on the apostolic ministry. At that time, there weren't very many books written on present-day apostles. And so the Lord was so gracious to begin to open up the scriptures to me and, and show me uh, what apostolic ministries do and being a pioneer and breakthrough and the different things that apostolic ministries are called to do. And um, then in 1999, I wrote another book called Moving in the Apostolic because in that 10-year period, God was gracious to keep adding uh, revelation. Sometimes when you get a message from God, the more you preach it, the more revelation comes. And so the more I preached it, the more God began to open up the whole uh, understanding of the apostolic. Uh, and I began to really, really do apostolic gatherings and ordain apostles and really, really recognize other apostolic ministries and really began to move in this by faith and, and began to see a, a great, great breakthrough in my ministry from that one trip uh, to Nigeria. Uh, since that time, I've preached in over 80 nations around the world. I've been in some very, very remote places, very unusual places, places that I didn't even know was, were, were on the map and um, had some unusual experiences, some unusual miracles, uh, just some great, great um, breakthroughs. And you're looking at a, a young man that came from the inner city on the south side of Chicago. So it was never in my DNA or never in my vision to travel the world. And I found myself in, in all kinds of unusual places, uh, ministering uh, the word of the Lord and prophesying and doing deliverance and, and seeing uh, great, great things. And so as I began to study this subject on the apostolic, uh, one of the first things that the Lord began to, of course, teach me was the reason why he chose 12. Not 14, not 13, but 12. There was a reason why Jesus chose 12 men to follow him and be apostles. Now, some people say there were, more, there were only 12 apostles, and we know that if you count Matthias after Judas fell, he would be number 13. We know that Paul is called an apostle. He would be number 15. James, the Lord's brother, is called an apostle. He would be number 16. Um, we know that Barnabas is called an apostle. He would be number 17. So there are more than, there are more than 12 apostles. And we also know that the, the 12 apostles were what we call pre-ascension apostles. But as Jesus ascended and in Ephesians chapter 4, he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. So there was a release of apostolic, prophetic, and, and evangelistic gifts and teaching and pastoral gifts at the ascension. Uh, and, but the 12 were chosen before he ascended. 
ascended before he died. And, and sometimes when you're dealing with, with certain subjects, you have to become theological because you have to deal with theological demons in people that always want to argue and talk you out of your calling and say there are no more apostles, but now we have pastors and evangelists and we have bishops and we have archbishops and we have archbishops deluxes and all these other titles, that, you know, and, and, and people always want to pull out apostles and prophets, but uh, Jesus chose 12 and there's a reason why he did that. Because Jesus was raising up a new group of people that would, that would be a fulfillment of the group that he raised up called Israel that had 12 tribes. There were 12 tribes. Jesus is now raising up a new nation, a new group, and the 12 tribes of Israel are simply types of the, of the church. And it's also interesting that in the book of Numbers chapter 11, that Moses was told to bring 70 elders to the tabernacle that would assist him. And the Spirit of God came upon them and they prophesied. And it's also interesting that Jesus chose 70 to send out in addition to the 12. So you begin to see these numerical equivalents that Jesus is raising up a new group of people, uh, a, a, a new group that would, that would be the fulfillment of a type that he raised up in, in old covenant Israel, 12 tribes, 12 apostles, 70 elders, 70 disciples sent out. So these numbers are very, very important. And so when you study the 12 tribes of Israel, I believe that each one of the sons of Israel, um, because they represent the apostolic, each one of the sons of Israel, their name, their birth is also a type or an aspect of the apostolic ministry. Uh, there's only one book that I knew of that I read years ago that was written by Gwen Shaw. She's gone on to be with the Lord, but she did a, a whole teaching on the 12 tribes of Israel and how they prophetically uh, represent the church today. She went through each name and, and defined their name and how they uh, resemble some of the things that we go through as apostolic people. And so tonight I'm going to, I'm going to look at one individual of the 12 uh, that is mentioned in Deuteronomy chapter 33. And I'm going to move very quickly because I want to really, really see an impartation and a release tonight. But tonight, the Lord gave me a word for this house and for those of you who are here. And the word the Lord gave me was a phrase, and it's, it's, it, the phrase is, from struggle to overflow. From struggle to overflow. Has anyone ever been in a struggle? How do you move from struggle to overflow? Uh, and, and I want to look at uh, Deuteronomy chapter uh, 33 and verse number 23. Uh, the son by the name of Naphtali. And um, he is a son that his name means struggle. Can you imagine your name means struggle? His mother named him Struggle. Because she's one of the concubines of, of Jacob and she's in a struggle with the other concubine and they're, 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 they're wrestling or struggling against each other to bring forth these children for Jacob. So she finds herself and she actually says, I've struggled with my sister and she names her son Naphtali and his name means struggle. Now, uh, two of my favorite chapters in the Old Testament are Genesis chapter 49, where Jacob prophesies over the 12, and Deuteronomy chapter 33, where Moses prophesies over the 12. And so each of the sons, they get a prophetic word from Jacob and also from Moses that really describes their destiny and their purpose. And here's the word that God gives, Naphtali. It's in Deuteronomy 33 and 23. Now, I'm going to read the New Heart English Bible. It says this. It says, Naphtali, overflowing with favor and full of the Lord's blessing. Overflowing with favor and full of the Lord's blessing. This is the word 
that Moses released over this tribe, a tribe that would not just have favor, but overflow with favor. His name means struggle. And yet his, his prophetic destiny is that he would overflow with favor. How do you go from struggle, not just to favor, but overflowing favor? And then when you look at the term struggle, as I said, the 12 sons of Jacob are also pictures of the apostolic ministry. Uh, what, re, what, what it reminds me of uh, is one of the aspects of the apostolic ministry is struggle. Uh, apostles have to struggle against certain things that will attempt to prevent them from doing what God has sent them to do. The apostle is the sent one. And, and a verse that is often mentioned is when Paul said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. One translation actually says, we struggle not against flesh and blood. So it's a picture of, a, of a, an apostle or an apostolic people that are wrestling and struggling against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, that as God sends you out apostolically, as God sends you into a territory, your struggle is not with flesh and blood, but it's against demons and, and principalities and powers and spirits that are attempting to block you and stop you from doing what God has called you and sent you to do. So when you're apostolic, when you're an apostolic people, when you're sent by God, uh, there will be a struggle. There will be a fight. There will be a warfare. There will be a wrestling. But, but God does not intend for you to be defeated. I said God does not intend for you to be defeated. Anyone that has a genuine apostolic calling uh, and is sent by God into a territory, into a city. Now, I'm sent by God into Chicago, and Chicago has some devils. I've been dealing with them a long time. They don't like me. I don't like them. Uh, I've been struggling, but I've been seeing victory after victory after victory because... One of the things about an apostolic people is that there is a strength that God puts in you that really when you struggle against something, instead of it wearing you out, you're designed by God to wear it out. As a matter of fact, the, the more you fight a genuine apostle, the stronger they become. Apostles by nature have a, have a spirit in them that the more you fight and attack them, instead of them bagging away and bagging down, the stronger they become, the bolder they become, the, the, more, the more agitated they become. I remember when I first began to preach uh, certain truths in Chicago that were not usually preached, uh, people would attack me and people would, would come on the radio and television and call my name and say he's a heretic. And instead of me running, it kind of got me angry and it kind of got me stuck up and I would come and preach it harder I would say thank you for the motivation amen the more the more you attack the more the stronger I'm going to get because you're not just dealing with just a, a regular anointing you're dealing with an apostolic anointing that does not back down from the struggle and so every one of you individually there are things you struggle with you can struggle in your finances you can struggle in your health you can struggle in your your career you can struggle in your ministry. You can see yourself struggling against certain things. But here, this man, this son of Jacob, his name means struggle, but God gives him a prophetic word that you're going to not just have favor, you're going to overflow with favor. In other words, the more you struggle, the more you're going to get ready to experience not just favor, but overflowing favor. 
And the reason why I love this is because when you begin to overflow with favor, it means to have more than enough. This is outpouring. We're talking about outpouring. God anoints your head with oil and your cup runs over. When, when you begin to overflow and you begin to uh, have more than enough favor, and then when favor begins to increase on your life, uh, sometimes people will not understand the favor of God. I, have a, I, I notice that when I preach, I point. When you have overflowing favor on your life, sometimes people will become jealous. They'll become critical. They'll talk about you. But they have not known your struggle. Hmm. They were not there when you were fighting. They were not there when you were contending. They were not there when you were wrestling. They were not there when you were overcoming. People always see you when God promotes you, but they don't see you in the prayer closet. They don't see you behind the scenes. They don't see the things you had to overcome, the things you struggled with, the things that sometimes you almost didn't believe you were going to overcome it, but you kept praying and you kept worshiping and you kept fasting and you kept confessing the word and you kept pressing yourself into service and you kept getting impartation. You know, every time I get it, I start preaching. There's a preaching anointing on this platform. I try to be a nice teacher, but then I get stirred up and... Mm. You struggle, you press, you wrestle, you war, you fight, you contend against discouragement, frustration, rejection, hurt, lack, witchcraft, confusion, tiredness, weariness, depression, and all the other demons that try to keep you from breaking through, but that apostolic spirit on the inside of you, it, it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Uh, when I first began to teach on deliverance, I, did a, I wrote a book called Why Does Deliverance Take So Long? I noticed that some people, uh, they would come for deliverance and they expected that in one service they would be just completely free. And some people got major deliverances. Then I noticed some people, their deliverance was slower. They, they would get some deliverance. They would come back for more. And then it would take a period of time to really minister to them in different areas of their life. And some people, they got discouraged. And the Lord gave me a lesson from, from the book uh, of Judges where it says that God left some of the nations in, in the land. Israel did not drive them out in one year. But the Lord left some of the nations in the land to teach them how to war. Sometimes God allows you or allows things to remain in your life because he doesn't just want to deliver you, he wants to teach you how to fight. He wants to, he wants to teach you how to overcome through the word, through faith through prayer, through fasting. Some people, they just want deliverance, but they don't want to learn how to fight and learn how to war. They just want to get set free, and I'm, I'm free now. But, but see, it's, it's in that struggle against certain spirits that you just, you just cannot seem to break through right away, but you learn the word. You learn faith. You learn how to confess. You learn how to bind. You learn how to persevere. You learn how to be diligent. You learn how to discipline. You learn how to crucify your flesh. You learn how to deal with certain things because God has, has an intention for you not just to be delivered but for you to be a, a delivered warrior, a, a delivered fighter. And, and so God taught us that sometimes you deal with stuff in your life that doesn't just move right away. Some things go. I've dealt in deliverance. I remember I was, I was, I was ministering, and I tell this story, uh, I was ministering in Kuwait and I was doing a deliverance a deliverance conference in Kuwait. And um, when I got there, it was during the month of Ramadan, which means that no restaurants were open during the day. So we had to fast all day. So I, and, and, and at night, McDonald's would open. So I'm in the service, 
and I know that we're going to get out a certain time, and I'm going to be able to go to McDonald's and eat. And this lady comes in, and she's demonized. So we begin to pray for her. And, um, and I'm saying, come out. And these demons are, are saying, we will go. But they wouldn't leave. And I'm, I'm down there for about 30, 40 minutes. And I'm saying, devil, come out. And in my mind, I'm saying, if, if, if I don't get her delivered, McDonald's is going to close. <laughs> I know that's terrible. I know. I'm just, I'm just being honest with you. I was like, look. Look, demons, you got to get out of here. I got to get to McDonald's. I'm sorry. I have not eaten all day, and there's nothing open, and here you are talking about come out, and I'm like, you, you know, look, I, I need a Big Mac. I'm sorry. You, you got to get free. I asked the Lord to forgive me. That was not very spiritual, but, and finally she got free, and we got out in time. I was like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> learning how to contend, learning how to deal with stuff without giving up, learning how to have a struggle. And when I say struggle, I'm not necessarily talking about sin. I'm just talking about things we struggle with. A lot of people struggle financially. It's like you just cannot seem to break through financially. You give, you believe God, you confess, but it, you, you have enough maybe to pay your bills, but you, you, you barely have anything left over. Um, and, and, and thank God for those miracles. I was shaking my phone too. I've never been in a phone shaking service. Well, you shake the phone and open it up and money's in your account. I said, I like this. I, we need to have more services like this. And brother, if you announce that, your, your building will be packed up, packed out. Come to the phone shaking service. Amen. God's going to add money into your account. You'll have sinners. You'll have all kind of folks showing up in here with their phone. If I'm going to have two and three phones shaking them at the same time. You, you, if you get those kind of miracles, trust me, people will show up. Hmm. So you learn how to, how to contend with poverty and lack and, and barely enough. But you keep believing God and you, you keep using your faith and you keep, you keep giving, you keep sowing, you, you, keep, you keep decreeing, you, you keep believing in abundance and, and, and you struggle against that, that thing that's been in your family for generations. But I'm telling you now that your struggle is coming to an end. You're about to go from struggle to overflow. God is saying to all my Naphtali's, all of my, my sons and daughters that have struggled, uh, you were born in struggle, your, your nickname has been struggle, the enemy has tried to keep you struggling, uh, but he say, he prophesied over this young man Moses and saying, oh Naphtali, overflowing with favor and full of the blessing of the Lord, uh, there's a favor that's come on you. And let, 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 let me say this. Let me say this, when favor hits your life, the struggle is over. Hmm. I love to live a life. I love the lessons I learned from struggling. But I don't want to struggle all my life. I want to believe God for breakthrough. I want to believe God for an overflow. I want to believe, God, that it flows some overflow of joy if you struggle with depression, an overflow of health if you struggle with sickness, an overflow of finances if you struggle in money, an overflow of relationships if you struggle in relationships, an overflowing prayer life if you struggle in prayer, an overflowing worship life if you struggle in worship. Come on, people of God. An overflowing life. Amen. God is going to take you from struggle to overflow. And this is the word of the Lord for this house. No matter how much struggle you've had in the past, as she mentioned, coming to this region and everything looks good, but they're demons. They smile at you. Nice demons. But then you're trying to plant an apostolic prophetic church some regions, they like nice churches, 
They don't want anything fresh and revivalistic and anointed. They'll fight that. Um, Chicago uh, for generations uh, was known as a very strong Roman Catholic city. We have major Roman Catholic churches there. And, and so it was always very religious. Even the gangsters were Roman Catholic. Yeah, Al Capone was, they, they were Sicilians, you know. My mother was Sicilian, so I know how the Sicilians think. My grandparents were from Sicily, and, you know, they, 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 and, and the Godfather, he was, he was baptizing the baby, and they were sending out a hit, and he was renouncing Satan and when they was baptizing the baby, and they were killing people. So they, they're very, very religious. They think that, you know, we can kill, and we can rob, and we can steal, but as long as we're buried in a Roman Catholic, Catholic cemetery and we have the blessing of the priest we're going to heaven or either purgatory where you may spend you may spend an extended period of time and if somebody lights a candle for you you may get out on parole out of purgatory and go to heaven but but it's religious and then you begin to raise up a church full of praise and worship and the prophetic and deliverance and the apostolic and miracles and healing and intercession and all these different things that God teaches us and, and training people and releasing people and activating people and, and discipling people and raising up people and, and doing something that is cutting edge. Uh, those demons in that territory, they don't want you to overflow. They don't want you to overflow financially. They don't want you to overflow in membership. They try to limit you and keep you smaller and won't let you break through, and you find yourself wrestling against that. And if you're not careful, you'll get discouraged by the, by the enemy of that territory. But the part of the apostolic is to take you from struggle to overflow. That's what I love about this anointing. You get around an apostolic ministry. You get around an apostle. I don't care what you're struggling in. The anointing on an apostle or a prophet and other ministry gifts uh, can break the struggle off of your life uh, and bring you into overflow. If you get around an apostolic word, if you get around a prophetic word, if you get hands laid on you and you get impartation, you can come in that door struggling in every area of your life, but just sit under the word and sit under worship and get under the glory cloud. I'm preaching better than you responding tonight and watch you go from struggle to overflow. Come on, see, I'm going from struggle to overflow. Come on, tell somebody, I'm going from struggle to overflow. It's the anointing. It's, that's what the apostolic is designed to do. You need a certain kind of anointing. You need a certain kind of preacher, a certain kind of teacher, a certain kind of man and woman of God that knows how to move in the power and anointing of God that'll preach and break you out of struggle. I don't care what you've been going through, how to break curses and assignments and witchcraft and sorcery off of your life. Hallelujah. Minister deliverance to you. Get demons out your life. Command them to go. Renew your mind. Change the way you think. Teach you how to give. Teach you how to give. Stretch you in your giving. Challenge you in your giving. We, we need those kind of anointings where, where men and women of God, by the anointing of God, will challenge you in your giving. Because when you start talking about money in the church, people get all nervous and tight and, and upset. And then, and then when somebody with a prophetic anointing comes in and stretches you and, and says, the Lord says for some of you to sow this amount, people get all nervous. But what God is trying to do is break you out of a limitation of giving and get you to sow something bigger because he wants to bless your finances. Sometimes you need bold preachers that will break you out of that $5 $10, $20 uh, seed that you've been sowing for the last 20 years and you wondering why you don't multiply because when God speaks to you about sowing a large seed, then you get mad and you rebuke the devil. Hmm. I was sitting in a service several years ago and we were there to pray for a woman of God who has a, had a great church, but she had gotten sick. And so we were all there to support her and to bless her financially. 
And the man of God stood up and said, I want 12 people to sow $1,000. And so I stood up. And there was someone sitting next to me who didn't stand up. And I said to her, do you want to sow $1,000? She said, yes, but I don't have it. I said, I'm going to give you $1,000. I want you to sow it. And I said, from this moment forward, the Lord wants to bring you into a realm of giving where you begin to sow these kinds of amounts. She had never given $1,000 in her life. So I gave her the $1,000. I made sure she put it in the offering. She later came to the church uh, with a, a seed of her own. She never sown a thousand. I went back to my church and I, I, I said, how many of you have never sown a thousand dollar offering? And many of them stood up. They never sown, sowed that amount. I said, I want you to believe God for a seed of a thousand dollars. If you don't have it, I want you to believe God to give it to you. I said, if you have to save up a certain amount every week, I want you to believe God and so a thousand dollar seed because I said, because God wants to break you into a realm of giving that you've probably never walked in before. And so that year, many of my members, they'd never sown that amount and they began to come and they began to sow uh, seeds of a thousand dollars. And God began to do miracles in their life financially because they had to be pressed into that realm of giving. Now, I'm not don't get worried. I'm not going to take an offering. I'm just telling you what, what has happened to me uh, when, it, when, it, when it comes to giving. Um, because sometimes to go in the overflow, you have to step out in faith and make a sacrifice. And see, people get upset, especially when prophets do this. Sometimes, now I know there are prophets that do it and they manipulate people. And I'm not talking about that. But a prophet has an anointing for finances because the Bible says if you believe it's prophets, you'll prosper. And that's why sometimes when prophets come to a church, they will actually encourage people and, and, and to tell people to sow a certain amount because God wants to push you into a realm of giving whereby you break through. And, and people, when they respond to that, one offering can change your whole life. One offering can break lack off of your life. But today you've got so many unbelievers that say, oh, you know, when you go to church and they tell you to give uh, a certain amount, don't do it. Uh, because, you know, you ought to just let, let, let God tell you. Well, the problem sometimes with us is that God is trying to tell us and we're ignoring God. And we're not really listening. And sometimes the word of the Lord comes to press you into a realm of giving and breakthrough. Whereby you begin to sow uh, what you've never, ever sown before. When I came to the church I had no money I had no suit I had holes in my pocket I, I had a pair of green pants and, and I remember being in service and having some change to give and I put the change in my pocket and I forgot I had a hole in my pocket and the change ran down my leg down the aisle and I'm in the aisle getting my change to, to give in an offering I had nothing but I learned when men and women of God would come to our church and they would say I want so many people to give a hundred dollars or fifty and it was my last I would get in the line and I was so and I would believe God, God, I want you to break me through. And God began to bless me. And God began to move in my life financially because sometimes you have to be pressed out of your struggle if you're going to move into overflow. And one of the main areas we need overflow in is money. You ought to have enough money in your account where you're not living from week to week and from paycheck to paycheck. Remember when they had this government shutdown? The TSA agents were not getting paid. And I fly a lot. And when I went to the airport, these were some of the saddest people. They were mad because so many people live from paycheck to paycheck. And if they miss one paycheck, their whole life falls apart. And I, 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 had to, I, I prayed for them when I went through TSA. Because they were mad. They weren't getting paid. They, they were blaming the president and blame, blaming the Congress because they were living from week to week. I believe that God can give you enough overflow that you're not living from week to week to week. Amen. If, a, if your car breaks down, you don't go bankrupt. If you miss one paycheck, you don't lose your house. Uh, it's time for overflow, especially in finances uh, where you'll have more than enough. And so I'm 
be able to prophesy over you tonight uh, that if you've had a struggle in your finances, uh, God's about to take you from struggle to overflow. His favor is about to come on your life and you're going to move into overflow and abundance uh, that you've never had before. I decree it and I prophesy it over this church. Hallelujah. Say, if, say from struggle, from struggle to, overflow. to overflow. Say, I will no longer struggle. I will, no struggle. I will overflow I will with favor. With favor. I'll, be I'll be satisfied with favor. With favor. My, struggle My struggle is coming to an end. I've struggled long enough. I've wrestled long enough. I've fought long enough. I've warred long enough. I've contended long enough. It's now time for outpour and overflow. Outpour and overflow. The Lord anoints my head with oil and my cup runs over. I will overflow. I will have more than enough. I will break through all struggles in my life. I will overflow. I decree it. I speak it. I confess it uh, because I believe it uh, in Jesus' name. Come on, if you believe it, put those hands together and thank the Lord tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm. The apostolic and the prophetic, those anointings are designed by God to break you free from struggle. Hmm. I'm speaking of this thousand dollars, and I'm just gonna put my my young prophet on on the scene. And I usually don't do this, but many years ago, um, how old were you then, Rodrigo? He was only 16. He was in a conference, and um, he came to our conference with a seed of a thousand dollars, and he walked up to me and put the seed in my hand. I didn't even really know him well. He put a seed of a thousand. He was 16. And he came with his pastor and his pastor tried to talk him out of doing it. <laughs> Say, no, I don't give that, that much. But he did it by faith. And something broke in his life. He began to move from having Again, 16 years old, generally you're not overflowing. <laughs> and he began to believe God, and God began to break limitation off of his life. And eventually he began to move in greater realms of prosperity simply because he believed in sowing and giving. And I use that as a testimony that no matter how, where you are in your finances, that God can use your leaders to challenge you in your giving. So when your leaders challenge you, when the anointing comes on them to challenge you to give, respond. When the anointing comes on your leaders to give, because God is trying to break struggle out of your life and bring you into overflow. And, and, and we get nervous in the church when preachers talk about giving and offerings. Because folks say, well, they're just after my money. No, God is after your money. Because God knows if you sow. It'll be given unto you. Given it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Listen, shall men, shall men, shall men give unto your bosom. Giving causes you to have favor with men. Given it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall men, shall men, shall men give unto your bosom. God is able to make all grace, all favor abound toward you. 
that you having all grace and sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. I, I preached on giving uh, as, a, as a way to get favor. When you give, God God releases favor upon your life. So always be a giver. Never never be cheap and stingy. Never never hold back. Never, never think that you can hold on to everything you have and, and favor is going to come. God blesses with favor liberal people because when they sow into the house and when they sow into the kingdom. And, and I, I remember years ago I had a young lady in my church. I looked up her giving record. She gave one dollar the whole year. So I confronted her. I said, listen, daughter. I said, you're not going to get a breakthrough by giving a dollar. She said, no, I, I give more than that. Let's put the cash in. I said, I wish you'd put it in an envelope so we can know what you're giving. At least we can have a record of it. I had another, pre, another youth leader in my church uh, a corporate man, and uh, I, I, I don't usually do this. The Lord said, look up his giving record. I looked it up. He gave, he gave $200 the whole year. That's an average of about what, $4 a week? And so I confronted him. I said, you're a leader in this church. You're a corporate man. And you gave, you gave $200 the whole year? He gave one offering the whole year. We had a record, one offering. I don't know, something must have hit him that Sunday. <laughs> that must have been a glorious service for him to give $200. I don't know if the wind of God, the lights of God must have came in there. It must have been a glory cloud because he actually reached in and gave $200. I need to get a record of that service and then get a recording of it and go over it again and find out what happened in that service to give you the, the chance to, to give $200 for the whole year. So you'll never, ever have favor like that. You'll never overflow like that. That is not the way to be blessed. And listen, I don't look up people's giving records in my church. The Lord told me to look up his record. And when I looked it up, I cried. I actually wept as a pastor. I felt so terrible. I cried. I called him up and confronted him, and I cried. And people say, well, you shouldn't have talked to him about his giving. That's between him and God. I said, well, he's a leader in my church, and, and that, that's, not, that's not a good thing to have. You're a leader in the church. He was over all my youth, my whole youth department, and I was horrified, a corporate man. And then, and then now you got social media. You can see folk eating at steakhouses, at football games, basketball games. I mean, he's out eating, dining, got pictures of it. You know, we're at the steakhouse now, plates all over the table. I know that costs more than $200, but when it comes to the house of God, you don't put anything. Listen, people, if you're going to be a mess, don't be on social media because everybody's going to know your mess. When you learn how to give and learn how to sow, you'll go from struggle to overflow. When you learn how to obey the Spirit of God and sow abundantly, you will go from struggle to overflow. I just feel tonight that the Lord is going to break. Some of you have been giving. You've been sowing. You've been sacrificing. You've been doing it diligently. But I'm here to prophesy tonight over you. Don't give up. Your struggle is about to end. I prophesy over you tonight that overflow is about to hit your life. I prophesy that there's an outpour of prosperity that's going to come on this church and come on this house where God is going to raise up millionaires and those with means and those with large amounts of wealth to sow into the vision of this house. I decree it and I prophesy that from these seats are going to be raised up business people and corporate people and millionaires that will sow into harvest. I prophesy that your harvest is coming. Your harvest is coming. Your name harvest and you're going to get a harvest. And it's not going to be a small harvest. It's going to be an overflowing harvest. Ah. Oh, stand to your feet, people of God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. You are the God of the overflow. 
Oh, Father, if you, if you have been struggling and your finances are struggling and your health are struggling in relationships, it's, it's not for everyone. I don't just make all the calls for everybody just to run down because it's prayer, but I want you to make your way to the front of this auditorium. I'm going to pray for you, and I'm going to believe God for an anointing tonight uh, that's going to break this struggle off of your life. Uh, many of you, God has taught you how to war, how to fight. You've been faithful. You've been diligent. Uh, you've learned how to stand in faith. You learn how to persevere, but God is saying to me tonight to, to begin to decree over you abundance and breakthrough, a decree over you harvest and overflow, and there's an outpour of favor that's about to hit this house, an outpour of favor that's coming to harvest and coming to your life, and as you stand here tonight, I prophesy and decree over you that the struggle is over. I decree tonight, I come against every demon that you've been contending with uh, that has been fighting against you and I pray for angels uh, to be released on your behalf uh, to help break you through and I hear the Lord saying you're not alone there'll be more that be with you than against you the Lord said my angelic army is released on the behalf of this church uh, and the things you've been contending with uh, and the demons you've been contending with uh, the Lord said you're not in this battle uh, on your own the Lord said the battle is mine the Lord said I'm going to give you victory after victory after victory after victory over everything you struggled against. Come on, lift your hands and begin to pray. Oh, we stir it up, God. A new anointing, a new release of the Holy Ghost is falling tonight over every person that is on this altar. I pray, Lord, tonight that the struggle is over in their life, and I pray for a release. I know a release, an outpour, an outpour, an outpour, an outpour, a fresh outpour on their life tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, keep those hands lifted. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Ah, oh glory, oh Lord, hallelujah. Come on, keep worshiping. We're gonna make some confessions in a moment. Just keep worshiping, keep praying, keep, keep, keep your hands lifted. Just let the let a fresh outpour come on your life tonight. As I began to preach, I felt the anointing of God come uh, concerning finances, concerning overflow in your finances, uh, your business, your money, your contracts, your land, your property, uh, what your, what your, your, your salary. I, I command increase. Uh, I command miracles uh, to be released uh, in your finances. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, no more struggle in your money. Uh, no more struggle in your property. No more struggle. Listen, there, 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 there's some of you here, you've been struggling with property issues. House, property, land. You've been struggling with property issues. Not just money, but land issues. Property, house, apartment. And tonight, angels are being released on the behalf of your land, your property. 
to drive out every demon that would sit on your land. Say, no demon will sit on my land. No demon will possess my land. Let angels come on my behalf to drive out every demon that would try to settle my land. Let them be evicted in the name of Jesus and let my land, my property, my inheritance be released on my behalf. I will not struggle with land issues. I will not struggle with property issues. This is interesting. I hear mortgages being paid off. Those that are behind on mortgage, foreclosures being stopped, mortgages being paid off. Come on, we're talking about overflow. We're talking about miracles. Debts being canceled. In the name of Jesus, I feel, I feel a miracle anointing that's still residue, a residue of the conference. It's a miracle anointing that Jennifer stepped into, but I sense a miracle anointing tonight for land and property and debt cancellation in the name of Jesus. By the power of God, you will not struggle with land and property and land issues. And then, I hear the Lord saying, those who struggle with transportation issues, cars, trucks, you need that car, you need that truck, you need that vehicle. I say the struggle is over. You'll have, you'll have the vehicle that you need. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, lift those hands again, people of God. Say, Lord, say it again, Lord, I believe because of the anointing, the apostolic anointing, the prophetic anointing that is on this house, on this church, on this ministry, I will move from struggle to overflow I believe that the struggle is over in my finances in my health in my family in my relationships in the name of Jesus and here's another one the Lord is showing me emotional struggles say I will not struggle with depression with sadness with discouragement, with defeat, uh, with hopelessness, with despair, with suicide. I will not struggle with these demons, with rejection, with fear, with hurt, uh, with shame, uh, with pain. I will not struggle, but I will overflow with joy. Joy! <laughs> see, see, I will overflow with laughter, with joy. I will have a merry heart. I will not struggle with sadness, but the oil of joy will be on my life. I will laugh. I will dance. I will celebrate. I will have joy. I will be happy. I will not struggle with defeat, but I will have overflowing victory. Overflowing victory. Overflowing victory. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, 
Oh, come on, lift those hands again. I feel such an anointing here tonight. You're decreeing your way into victory. You're speaking your way. You're prophesying your way out of struggle. You're prophesying your way out of struggle. You're speaking your way out of struggle. The anointing is here tonight. You're decreeing your way out of struggle. You're talking your way out of struggle. You're speaking your way out of struggle. You're praising your way out of struggle. You're worshiping your way out of struggle. The glory of God is coming on you tonight and the spirit of glory is resting on you. There's an outpour of glory that's coming on you tonight to break you free from struggle and pain. Say, I will not struggle in my finances. I will overflow with riches and wealth and prosperity and abundance. I will not struggle in my career, in my business, in my salary, in my employment. I will not struggle, but I will have overflow in my bank account in my checking account, in my finances. I decree it tonight. I speak it tonight. I believe it tonight. In the name of Jesus. Now go ahead and give him a praise for it. Give him a praise for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. I will not struggle with health issues, but I will overflow with health and healing. I will not struggle with weakness. I will overflow with strength. In the name of Jesus, I will not struggle with negative reports, with bad reports concerning my health. In the name of Jesus, I'm moving from struggle to overflow in my life. Say, I will not struggle with bad relationships. I will overflow with good relationships. I'm moving from struggle into overflow in the name of Jesus. I will not struggle with sleeplessness, with insomnia, with restlessness, I will overflow with peace and shalom all the days of my life. I will not struggle with poverty and lack, but I will overflow with abundance and wealth. I will not struggle in my giving, but I will overflow in my giving and in my receiving. I will not struggle in my harvest, but I will overflow. This this, this is what I heard when I said that. Harvest. I heard the phrase bumper crop. How many know what a bumper is? Say, I'm gonna get a bumper. Crop in my harvest. This is bumper season. Say, my next season. Come on, say my next season will be a bumper season. I'll have more than enough. I'll have a great harvest. Say, I will not struggle in my harvest. In the name of Jesus, I believe by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, the struggle is broken in my life. And I'm moving from struggle to outpour and overflow. One more time, lift your hands and lift your voices. Come on, keep those hands lifted, keep worshiping. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, the glory of God is here. Come on, receive the outpour, receive the outpour. 
Let a new outpour, let a new anointing come on your life. I'm not sure about any of your history or anything concerning your life, but I saw God put deeds in your hands for property. And I saw financial miracles coming into your life. And there's this little girl inside of you that wants to come out like a full grown Jesus. And you've been spiritually pregnant for the last several months and your mood swings have gone up and down and you've said, Lord, what is this? And the Lord says, you've been trying to name your spiritual baby from your memory banks. But the Lord says, I alone know the name of your baby, so relax and enjoy the pregnancy. Enjoy the ride, enjoy the ups and the downs, because it's me. It's not bad and it's not wrong, it's me. God's going to give you a visitation of the gift of the word of knowledge. And he's going to cause there to be an increase of the word of knowledge in your life. And it's going to be like you begin to see memory, uh, pictures and you're going to be able to see pictures, almost like movie pictures that they move and you're like, what is this? There's an increase of that gift coming on you. And I saw God putting even daughters around you. I almost feel like there's a Proverbs 31 woman ministry inside of you with women where you'll begin to groom them and grow them for the future. Because you don't want them to go to what you went through. There's an impartation that God's going to give you a boldness of might. And God says, I will fund it. Whatever you need, just write the vision and I will cause it to come to you. So the Lord says, relax. It's me. So Father, we bless her today. And I pray for an impartation of the word of knowledge. Let her come upon her. Let there be a new sight upon her, Father. Let her be a keen discernment. Let the spirit of the gift of the sermons. And I even hear this, that with discernment, you're going to begin to even cast out devils in a greater dimension. You're just going to show up and people will not like you. But there's going to be something concerning deliverance. And it's going to be so strong on you. You're, gonna have, you're not going to have to do a lot of work. You'll just have to begin to minister. And the demons will begin to come out. I hear the demons crying out and saying, let me go. Let me go. Let me go. It's going to begin to happen. So, Father, let it come upon her, Father. It's going to come over you from the top of your head, from the bottom of your feet. Father, let it come now. Let the visitation begin to happen in Jesus' name. Here it comes. Let it come, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I want to minister to you. I saw you over there I saw like two lines of people and you were walking almost as if someone was standing in front of you and when you took the step I heard the Lord say become a father and God's gonna put something inside of you for young men with addictions to different things and struggles to different perversion issues God's gonna put the father's heart inside of you and you've been feeling the groaning and the paining in your heart of what is this uncomfortable feeling and season that I'm going through. And God says, is my heart being knitted to your heart? There is a kneading and there is a, almost like a pulling in that he's doing in your heart. And I see you writing books and I see you developing different things as far as manuals go for the next generation. God says, you're going to be a father in this house. You're going to be a leader, not just a, you're not going to be just a leader, but you're going to be a father in this house. Because that whole thing of being abandoned and being left behind, you don't want that to happen to other people. But God's going to put his father's heart inside of you. You're going to feel the emotions, you're going to feel the pain, you're going to feel the ups and the downs. But you're going to have the father's house to minister to a generation of people who have been left behind. God's going to put destiny inside of your eyes and people are going to look at you and they're going to say, there's this destiny, there's hope for me. There's hope for me. God says, son, there's hope for you. I'm going to make room for you in my kingdom. 
because you've been faithful with little I'm gonna give you much you knew how to manage it I'm gonna give you much come on lift your hands again people of God father we impart that 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 father's grace that maturity that wisdom the Lord says son I'm gonna give you the maturity and wisdom that you need to deal with the hard cases You'll know how to handle them. You'll know what to say to them. You'll know how to instruct them. You'll know how to govern them. It'll be my wisdom inside of you because you have walked away from some things and because of the fear of the Lord is in your life. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So there's a new mantle of wisdom that's coming upon you to be a father from raising up fathers of wisdom and fathers of knowledge and those that have compassion and mercy. And I'm going to give you the ability to see destiny in people. I'm going to give you the ability to see what others cannot see I'm gonna give you the ability to see the gifts and calling that are buried deep inside of even the, the ones that you father and they even they, they don't even know what's inside of them you'll help unwrap and unpackage the gifts and the calling of God that is on the inside of you of them and I'm gonna give you the ability to impart uh, and to activate and release them into their destiny and even through the laying on of hands now and the prophetic word uh, that's coming a greater ability to activate and impart inside of you for I'm raising up fathers that are not just uh, be fathers in the natural but fathers in the spirit to be able to impart uh, and to activate people in their gifts and their calling and their destiny and their purpose it'll be something supernatural says the Lord you'll do it effortlessly it won't be a struggle for you it won't be difficult for you it'll flow out of you this gift that I'm activating inside of you tonight this new dimension that I'm calling forth out of you tonight the Lord said get ready to walk in it get ready to receive it it's something I'm giving you by my grace and I'm putting it upon you but I'm also putting it upon others in this house I'm gonna raise up groups of leaders in this house it won't just be one it'll be many says the Lord and even because there's been a fathering anointing on the leader of this house it's gonna fall on the sons and they'll not only be sons and but they'll also be fathers unto many and they'll be over groups and over over people that the leadership puts them over and they'll watch and they'll disciple and they'll train and they'll impart because of the harvest that I'm bringing father we impart that and release it now into his life by the prophetic word and by impartation in Jesus name Holly lift your hands the Lord said I, I teach your hands to war and your fingers to fight I'm gonna make you skillful in what you do said the Lord there's a writing anointing I'm gonna put in your hands to write and a write and a write and to put down the things that I've given you to write and to instruct others said the Lord for I'm putting I'm putting even wisdom and knowledge and understanding on the inside of you and you'll be able to impart that into others through writing and scribing and putting down your thoughts says the Lord I'm gonna show you dreams at night and visions in the night when I'm gonna open you up to another realm says the Lord another prophetic realm you're gonna walk in that you've not walked in before said the Lord get ready for a prophetic release of grace and anointing to come out of you I'm gonna cause you to see things that you could not see before and comprehend things and articulate things that you could not comprehend and articulate before so get ready for a new dimension of writing and a new dimension of teaching and instruction that will come upon you to help others who need to know the things of the spirit and the things of walking with the Lord I'm gonna call you to the deeper places said the Lord don't be afraid and don't draw back it's gonna be like Ezekiel I'm gonna take you beyond the ankles beyond the knees beyond the loins beyond the shoulders I'm gonna take you out into the deep said the Lord as I took you out Ezekiel out I'm gonna take you out by a thousand and then another thousand and then another thousand and then another Another thousand I'm measuring you says God I'm taking you out deeper so from this night forward get ready for a new realm of revelation increase in depth of the spirit in the days to come I'm gonna transform you and change you by my grace and by my prophetic word I'm gonna impart to you something fresh and something new and I heard the Lord say your labor has not been in vain and you've not been overlooked You've not been overlooked you've not been looked past but the Lord says I remembered you and I've seen you the Lord says you're you're welcome and you're you're, you're strong but the Lord, there's a new there's a new boldness that God has to come on you I want everybody to just look at look at them when you can 
I want everybody to shout as loud as you can on the count of three. And that is what the rewards of heaven sound like when they shout. It's like the, the, pre, the that's the celebration of heaven. Come on, as loud as you can. Three, two, one. Come on, come on. The white shirt. Yes. Come on, just a moment. Okay. Okay. This is your church. gonna begin to have a lot of dreams about your purpose and about what you're gonna become in the days to come you've been asking for it Lord where do I plug where do I step into God's gonna give you a visitation he's gonna give you dreams and specific details about how to function and God's gonna begin to launch you into your future God's going to begin to give you new things. And there's a, there's a preacher inside of you. If I cut you open, if I cut you open, what's going to come out of you is exhortation and preaching. God's going to begin to put a fire inside of you. And he's going to begin to cause you to preach, to preach. There's a preaching anointing inside of you. Father, we pray for that impartation of a preacher. Let it come upon her. Let it be a strong impartation of the preaching anointing, God. Let her preach with fire. Let her preach with strength. Let her preach with new oil, with new words, with new sounds. Let it come upon her, Father, in the name of Jesus. And I break the course and the limitations of the past. I break the limitations of the past, Father. I take authority over all demonic entities that kept her behind from family. I break the powers of darkness and I commend you to lose your daughter in the name of Jesus. I command you to go in Jesus' name. When he, when he mentioned there's a preaching anointing in, inside of her, ever since I've been here and I'm still on this platform, there is a preaching anointing in this church. And, and the Lord said to me, he said, the preaching anointing is supernatural. Preaching is not just for information. That when you preach under the anointing, it releases miracles. And we're going to learn that preaching is not just getting people excited, getting them emotional, but there's coming a preaching anointing uh, back into this region when men and women of God are going to stand and when they preach, it's going to release the supernatural. And I felt such a supernatural release in the service when I began to preach. Uh, and, and sometimes we look at preachers and say they're inspirational, but there is a preaching anointing. And even from this house, uh, God is going to raise up preachers. Uh, and he's going to raise up preachers from this house that will preach and prophesy and declare and there's a supernatural miracle anointing that's going to begin to be released and it won't just be men it'll be women that will preach as well women that will that will declare the good news there's a great company of women that God well God is going to raise up women preachers and some have said oh women can't preach but God is about to hit America with a new wave of women preachers and they're going to preach with fire and they're going to preach with power and they're going to preach with conviction and they're going to preach with miracles i decree it for california let california see preachers arise ah. And this state was known for Amy Simple McPherson, the woman preacher. The Lord said there's a heritage in this state that's about to be redug, and the wells are going to flow again. And I'm going to raise up women that will release movements and release the word and shake cities and shake nations. I'm going to do it, says God. Oh, so lift your hands even for the state of California. And tonight we release all across this state a new preaching anointing that will hit this state. Somebody shall preach. 
Say it again, preach. Say it again, preach. Say, let preachers arise. Let preachers arise. Let preachers arise. There's coming an overflow. And they'll say, where did all these preachers come from? Where did they come from? But the Lord said, I'm sending them out. And I'm going to stir them once again with fire. And they're not going to apologize for preaching with strength and fire and declaration. And they'll preach my word and watch miracles, watch healings, watch revival, watch glory, watch the curse be broken by the power of the preached word. It's going to come with fire. It's going to come to loose people from demons and devils and poverty and witchcraft. It's going to be bold preaching and straight preaching. It's going to bring conviction and men are going to run to the altar once again and say what must I do to be saved or oh, somebody shout hallelujah in this place oh. let them come out of this house I'm sorry what's your name Lorena I see you when you're like maybe four or five years old and I see you first I see you pulling like um ballerina shoes and just dancing around like a little girl just happy and looking yourself in the mirror and sometimes I see you crying and I see you looking yourself in the mirror when you cry and I see that God is gonna begin to restore that little girl inside of you and that joy that you've been seeking after that full almost like that full potential of me stepping back into me and for the last year I just feel like there's been this almost I don't want to say oppression but just like you've been battling this what is the season that I'm in and where is it that I'm going and what's the next 10 things I gotta do but God's gonna begin to give you answers and I see um, a shepherd's staff and I see him putting it around your necks and pulling you into his heart and you're gonna begin to feel the heartbeat of his chest and the Lord says there is a shepherd's grace inside of you since you were a young girl, you, you were able to feel people's emotions and what they're going through. And when you see pain, you don't like it. But you're a pastor, you're a shepherd. And you can be prophetic and all the other um, dimensions that come with the giftings. But there's a shepherd's grace inside of you. And the one thing about shepherds is that shepherds see him first. And you've had a lot of discernment over the years and you saw things going bad before they happened and as a little girl you were seen but you were not heard and God's gonna cause your voice to be heard I see him dropping a microphone like you're in a people when they announce a boxing match he's putting a microphone in front of you and he's gonna cause his voice to be your voice to be amplified it's like there's this powerful voice and momentum that's going to come over you God says over the next nine months you're going to begin to understand what it's like to be a shepherd and how to function in it the Lord says I'm putting you on a journey to understand being a shepherd and you're going to see others from a new a new sight there's going to be a new eyes there's going to be new perspective new ears new knowledge new paradigms the Lord says get ready for the new and there are some miracles financially that I'm going to begin to do for you. Even in the area of ownership, God says, I'm going to cause you to own. I even see, I don't know why I see this, but I see you owning vehicles. And I see you gifting the vehicles to other believers. And you say, when, when you don't have how, how to get somewhere, here's the car. God's going to put a wealth dimension on you. But this thing about a shepherd, you're going to begin to step into your shepherd place. Come on, stretch your hands toward her. Let there be a release of the gift that is inside of you. Let it be called out by the prophetic word. 
Let God breathe upon that gift and let it come forth. No fear, but boldness and courage and strength shall be your portion in the days to come. And I'm going to grow you. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to give you the unction to know how to do it, what to do, when to say, when to speak, when to love, when to hug, when to counsel. I'm going to teach you the different aspects of this dimension that I'm releasing in this hour, said the Lord. And you will not lack oil on your head, but it will be more than enough. There's an overflow of grace coming upon you now. Out of your mouth shall come wisdom and knowledge and understanding and counsel. Counsel should be your portion. You know how to counsel the hurt and the confused you know the right word to speak to them that lift them up and even from your lips shall come prophetic words that will help heal and deliver and set free the wounded sheep and those that have been hurting I'm gonna put a healing anointing in your hands and when you lay hands on the sick they'll recover said the Lord from calling shepherds that heal and shepherds that mend the broken and heal the hurting hearts and heal the wounded spirit says God so get ready for miracles don't limit yourself as a traditional shepherd but allow my miracle working grace to flow through you even in this gift says the Lord you'll not be limited by traditional pastor but you'll flow in the gifts and the compassion of God shall cause healing and miracles and deliverance and breakthrough to come and so Father let it be activated let it be released in our life now through the laying on of hands and through the prophetic word we decree and re release it now in Jesus name Amen Amen come on people of God Jay and Ceci, wherever that art, please come forth. Oh, there you go. Oh, there. Hallelujah. The Lord said, I'm causing your wings to spread like an eagle. And the Lord said, in the days to come, you will soar and you will go higher and higher and the things that have tried to hold you down and the things that have tried to keep you on the ground and keep you from soaring and rising, the Lord said, I'm putting wind under your wings and I'm going to teach you how to come out of the nest. You're not going to stay in the nest, says the Lord, but you're going to come out the nest and you're going to be like a young eagle and learns how to fly. And the Lord said, at times you tried to, but it seemed as if you couldn't get airborne. But the Lord said, get ready to get airborne airborne and get ready to soar like an eagle with strength and wisdom and soar into the heights and realms that I've called you into said the Lord the Lord said no longer can you hide in the nest no longer can you stay in the nest but there's coming a maturity and there's coming a wingspan I'm increasing you I'm growing you said the Lord you're outgrowing that small place you've tried to be in says God it's time to come out the nest and begin to soar and begin to go high and begin to go further than you've ever gone before it'll be me uh, it'll be me guiding you and teaching you and training you and stretching you and causing my wind to come into your life said the Lord so there's new wind and their new feathers and their new wings that I'm giving you said the Lord it is the work of the Spirit it is not the work of man it is the work of the Spirit of God get ready to dream at night get ready to have visions at night get ready to see things you've never seen before I'm to reveal my destiny to you and I'm going to show you my purpose and my plan for your life. You'll not walk in the dark. You'll not walk in obscurity, but you'll walk in light. You know exactly your purpose. You know exactly my plan. I'll give it to you in detail. I'll show it to you. Write it down. Write the vision. Write it down. Write in the journals. Write what I show you. Pray over it and believe me, said the Lord, and you shall see it come to pass strongly in the day to come and I heard the Lord say I put a prophetic windmill inside of you you don't need to like look for atmosphere but the Lord says that thing about the prophetic is going to begin to increase over you in the days to come there's a windmill inside of you. I see windmills produce energy. They, they, they produce visitations. They produce increase. God says, I put a windmill inside of you. And the Lord says, I'm going to cause you to even become, even step into the place of teaching. The Lord says, a teaching grace inside of you that's going to begin to rise up. And you're going to begin to increase. And you're going to begin to see even prophetic visions about the future. The Lord says, I put a windmill inside of you. Let the wind of God begin to steer the windmill in the name of Jesus. 
Jesus. Let the wind of God begin to flow over his life. Father, we declare, let the winds of favor, the winds of increase, the winds of glory, the winds of power, the winds of visitation. Let there be a visitation of the fear of the Lord that comes over his life in the name of Jesus. I pray, let it come upon his life now in the name of Jesus. And the Lord says, daughter, I don't know if you sing or not, but I see your vocal cords and I see the Lord giving you a visitation to your vocal cords and you've practiced prophetic singing in the past just joking around and playing around but the Lord says you're gonna have supernatural transformation to your vocal cords and I'm gonna cause even new songs to begin to rise out of you I'm gonna put a grace inside of you for songwriting says the Lord you're gonna begin to sing and you'll begin to dance and you'll begin to run again says the Lord you're gonna begin to move in the dimension of songwriting the Lord says there's even albums that you'll begin to write for this house and you'll begin to even cause there to be even a new anointing and a new visibility that comes to this house of worship says the Lord I've kept you hidden for a long time and I've tested you and I've observed your heart but the Lord says I give you today the day of visitation there's a visitation of the fear of the Lord that comes upon you so father we pray let that visitation of the fear of the Lord begin to come over her that she will not even be polluted like many other worshipers but the Lord says you'll worship me out of your revelation you'll worship me out of your relationship the Lord says you've you've stood before me and the Lord says Lord I will do it you said I will do it I will go and I will sing and say what others are not willing to say the Lord says I heard your cry and I did not overlook your tears but the Lord says I'm coming to visit you I'm gonna come to visit you says the Lord so father we bless her and we declare that visitation of being a singer and a psalmist and beginning to see the future even before it happens the Lord says I'm gonna show you how to see even 30 to 60 minutes in advance of a service I see a strong impartation of the seers anointing coming over you God's gonna begin to put that inside of you so father we bless her let it come upon her let the fire of God begin to flow in Jesus name amen as he was ministering to her I saw another struggle that many have, and it's to struggle with your gift, your calling. And God wants your gifts to overflow. Whether you're called to be a pastor, prophet, singer, psalmist, minstrel, God has put many gifts in this house. And some people, sometimes they have a gift, but they struggle with it. Fear, apprehension. They don't step out on it. They don't know what to do with that gift. But I want you to lift your hands again. Say, Lord, I will not struggle with my gift, with my calling, with my assignment, with my commission, with my mandate anymore. But I will overflow in my gift, my assignment, my mandate, and my commission. I am moving from struggle to overflow in my gifts, in my abilities, in my talents, in my mandate, in my purpose. The Lord says some of you have struggled with your purpose, either not knowing it fully or knowing it and not knowing how to walk in it. But I prophesy over you tonight that God is gonna cause you to break free from that struggle. You're not gonna struggle with your purpose. Are you listening to me tonight? Say, I will not struggle with my purpose. I will overflow in my purpose. Thank you, Lord, that the struggle is over with my purpose, with my destiny, and with your plan for my life. In Jesus' name. Now lift your voice one more time and give the Lord a shout tonight. Come on, pastors. I want to minister to you. I'm with the... You know, the Lord uses me, especially when it comes to the apostolic. And I know you know about the apostolic. And 
but, but there's a greater uh, impartation coming even for apostolic ministry and apostolic grace. And even tonight, as I talked about the apostolic, the Lord said, I've called this house to be an apostolic house. And the Lord said, those that come in this house and hear the preaching and the teaching uh, and the ministry, that uh, the praise, the worship, and the things that come uh, from this particular pulpit, the Lord said, I'm going to use you to bring deliverance and bring restoration and bring healing in a greater way in the days to come. There's coming a fresh apostolic move in this house. And the Lord said, I'm going to make you a model for many houses around the state. I'm going to make you one that can multiply and duplicate and reproduce yourself by raising up leaders and raising up believers. And it will not be all on you, says the Lord. You'll not be overwhelmed by the burden of ministry. But I'm going to give you the apostolic wisdom to know how to delegate, how to release, how to send at the proper time, how to raise up very quickly leaders and who to trust and who to release. I'm going to give you that apostolic wisdom wisdom but the Lord said your house is called harvest and the Lord said it's a prophetic name for the harvest of not just souls but the harvest of sons and daughters and the Lord said there'll be a harvest of miracles and a harvest of healings and a harvest of preachers and a harvest of singers and a harvest of musicians and a harvest of different gifts said the Lord I'm causing that name harvest not just be a church name on a building but a name that's prophetic for you said the Lord and the Lord said you'll see the harvest where other people don't see you're going to places where there's no harvest and you'll see the harvest in that particular place I'll send you to places where it looks like nothing is there but you'll see the harvest you'll see the fields of white for harvest I'll give you prophetic eyes to see said the Lord the harvest that is hidden in many regions and many territories and you'll see what others do not see and I'll make you a harvester but I'll also make you prophetic and apostolic said the Lord and when you lay hands and impart and prophesy the Lord said get ready but there's a new release coming to this house and Lord said the things you struggle with in the past even the birth and the bill Lord said the struggle is over there's coming a new ease there's coming a new anointing there's coming a new breakthrough and it won't be hard for you to break through said the Lord because you wrestled and you warred and you prayed and you fought and you cast out and you pulled down and you wrestled you've not been afraid to contend with the powers of hell now the Lord said get ready even to break through in regions but the Lord said there's an angel angel of breakthrough that's released for this house, an angel of breakthrough that is even in this service tonight, angels of breakthrough that are sent on your behalf to cause breakthrough, not only for you, said the Lord, but for the people that you shepherd and watch over. They'll also experience great breakthrough in the days to come. So stretch your hands toward them. Father, let that apostolic mantle and anointing God increase upon this couple. Let that prophetic apostolic shepherd your shepherds, but your apostolic shepherds. I put the apostolic staff and the shepherd's staff in your hands. You'll not be the traditional pastor. You'll be those apostolic pastors. You can pastor gifted people. You can pastor anointed people. You can pastor prophets. You can pastor other apostles. You can pastor teachers and pastors. You can pastor evangelists. You can pastor the gifts of God. You can pastor intercessors. You can pastor people that other people will not be able to handle and will not be able to pastor but they'll come here to be shepherded they'll come here for their gifts to be developed in the days to come father I thank you for the increase of the apostolic shepherds anointing in their life as I lay hands and prophesy let there be a release of that mantle strong I begin to hear the Lord say that there is even new doors that are going to begin to open. The Lord says, yes, you've had doors in the past, in the last several years. But Pastor Jen, the Lord says, it's time to step out the boat and begin to walk on new waters, says the Lord. It's time to go into new territories. Yes, you've had meetings and yes, you've had different things that you've hosted. But God says, I'm opening up a new door, a new place that you walk into, says the Lord. A new door that you'll begin to go and travel even to new, 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 new nations, new churches, new territories. There is new people that are going to begin to call you. 
to even I hear the Lord saying this that a model is better than a message and the model that you've developed for this for this meeting the Lord says you're gonna begin to duplicate it in other meetings and in other places around the country they're gonna begin to call you're gonna step into a new place of even in new doors for your ministry I see the Lord saying even I see people writing checks to host the ministries that you don't have to even be concerned about finances but God's gonna cause even an increased glory to come upon you it's gonna be unusual it's gonna be people are gonna say what is this the work doing what is she's doing I gotta go check it out the Lord says watch them they're gonna come they're gonna visit you they're gonna begin to do things for you that they would not do for others there's gonna be such a tremendous favor that God's gonna give you in the days to come and pastor I don't know if this is a part of your plan but I saw a preaching school that God's gonna begin to put inside of you even the desire to grow a, a preaching school you'll begin to teach others how to preach how to follow the flow when do I step into it when do I go away from this from this specific model and method when do I move when do I change there's such a intellectual knowledge inside of you concerning structure and administration and great delegation but God's gonna put even a new anointing for preaching inside of you I see fire coming out of your mouth there's gonna be such a new impartation of, of the Spirit of the Lord that comes upon you concerning preaching and your sons and your daughters are gonna begin to preach like you they're gonna say oh they sound just like him and they'll say yes I sound like my dad God says there's a preaching Institute inside of you begin to develop the plans the Lord says get the pen and begin to write because it's not just for the school but there's also books concerning administration and growth and church growth inside of you says the Lord I'm gonna cause you to suit to maximize the capacity of each house and you're gonna begin to write on how to grow your church says the Lord I'm gonna put out almost like a model inside of you what worked for us and you're gonna begin to test out different things in the days to come Come on, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Hallelujah. Um, you with the nice, yes, yes. You with the nice arms crossed. Like you're a nice little person. <laughs> But there is a warrior inside of you and you've been quiet for a long time but the Lord says no more hiding in my house I'm putting my light on you and I'm putting my spotlight on you for years you've looked at others and you said oh that's, that's great what they're doing how they're ministering and for a long time you've seen how it's done but God says I'm gonna cause that to happen to you and I'm gonna cause that voice inside of you to rise up are you open to it yes you know that's been something that you've been feeling a tug for and you kind of just been like you have your arms <laughs> just hanging out and chilling but God says I'm putting my light inside of you and there is a teacher grace of explanation inside of you how to explain things and how to articulate things the right way because oftentimes people don't explain them the right, the right way and I don't know why I see this but I see the same grace that the minister Derek Prince had on deliverance and on teaching that God's gonna begin to visit you with that for demons there's gonna be a thing about demons and the ministry of deliverance that God's gonna begin to put inside of you with a lot of force and with a lot of strength and it's gonna be bold and might God's gonna give you new concepts on deliverance for yourself and how to you're gonna walk out your purpose and you're gonna walk out your process and you're gonna share your story and God says that his glory is in your story and the Lord says no more holding it back begin to speak and I see God amending areas of your heart that you've been ignoring for a long time but unresolved issues buried alive never die they just pile up God's gonna begin to heal the broken places God's gonna begin to touch those places that you've isolated and you've let them dry out God says become living salt become the salt of the earth I'm gonna cause you to be even a mother in this place for young women that youth department that area that you yearn your, your generation to see God says I will do it 
but that deliverance grace is going to come on you. And I'm going to have Apostle pray for you for that deliverance impartation. There's going to be such a violent shaking inside of you. You have a lot to do in the kingdom. Don't deny it. There is such a need for deliverance, knowledge, wisdom, understanding in this realm for this generation. The Lord said, I'm raising up even new teachers and new instructors that will explain and teach on the subject of deliverance and even release understanding of this realm to the next generation that this anointing will not be lost. This anointing will not be hidden. It will not be lost. This knowledge will not be buried in the earth. But there's a new generation of teachers and preachers that will minister deliverance and cast out devils. And so, Father, I lay hands on her, Father, for an impartation and a release, Lord, of grace to teach, to explain, and boldness and courage to confront the powers of hell and compassion and mercy to love those that abound and demonize the Lord and discernment to see and understand even things that are hiding in people Lord let her see it let her explain it and give her an authority Lord to cast out devils and drive them out and command them to go and let demons respond and be afraid of the anointing and authority that shall come out of her mouth Father by faith I lay hands on her Lord and I impart a new grace to teach to explain to instruct and to bring revelation and let the spirit of revelation in the area of deliverance come forward Father in her life and let her be able to to raise up others and raise up schools and raise up teaching uh, sessions and seminars to train uh, another generation on the concepts of deliverance and casting out devils. Uh, Father, I am parted by faith and I speak it over her tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we give Apostle and, and Rodrigo and the team a hand? Amen. So I just bless you. I just bless you. Thank you so much for coming tonight. And have a great and powerful week. Amen. Amen. Thank you.